Hey there, we're taking a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U and the i5 1135G7. So we're doing another comparison here and the game is currently running at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings except the textures are set to medium. The performance overall that we're seeing here is at the stock 15 watts for both chips. You can see here that the i5 is just struggling to really produce even a 20 FPS. PS average with 1% lows that are dropping into the mid teens. It's not going to be a very great experience. Both of them are running on DirectX 12, by the way. So it's identical settings. Both of them have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you can just overall see here that the levels of performance that we're getting out of this are just not great. You can see that at the lowest possible settings at stock, the performance difference is pretty much just night and day here. This was actually a point of major deviation between the two where the i5 kind of just got stuck loading in this area here and both of them had a pop-in issue while loading in this you know like temple area but the i5 definitely took significantly longer to load in this scene to the point where it pretty much ended up finishing the benchmark significantly after the ryzen 5 did and again this is at the stock tdp so the level of performance that we're getting here is what you would get out of any of these systems with this chip out of the box set to 15 watts, which is what is the most common thing that you see. You can see here that the i5 is just barely now starting in that section here while it's just about to finish on the Ryzen 5. So there was a huge difference in terms of load times there for sure. And it was pretty severe. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is just completely ignore the RAM usage numbers. They're not actually being calculated properly. The Ryzen 5 is pretty much just showing the number of RAM that the game itself is actually using. While I forgot to set the i5 to show the exact same thing. The i5 is just showing the full system usage. So the numbers are not accurate in terms of being able to be compared between the two things will be different moving on from here on out in terms of like other games but this one the settings were just completely wrong and i didn't realize that until i was editing this together now if we actually set the target render resolution to 60 percent we can actually net a nice little performance bump on both different setups the thing is the i5 is really still struggling to perform at a playable frame rate though this is a much better result than what we were getting before the ryzen 5 is pretty much at this point giving us a complete 30 fps average and at this point it becomes a very very playable experience but the i5 for sure is just going to struggle here but the one percent lows did get enough of an uplift that it is at least a slightly better experience and the load times in general were slightly improved realistically speaking this is about the point where you would consider the ryzen 5 to at least be playable while i think that the full resolution 1080p results were good for the ryzen and five it definitely still was not in playable territory but at this point here with the 60 percent resolution scaling the performance is just so much better that i think that most people could actually play like this and have a decent enough time it's not really something i could say for the i5 and the reason is is that the one percent lows are still dropping below 20 and when your averages are already this low it's going to be very difficult to make anyone playing like this have a reasonable time playing this game you would realistically have to be very dedicated to playing through this game if you were willing to put up with what the i5 is doing right now and you can see that it still took a little while longer to load this section than it did for the rise 5 though it did not take as long as it did when we were at the full resolution definitely still not the ideal situation but it is just significantly better on the ryzen 5 and it is at least an improvement on the i5 but you'll see that it also exhibits the same pop-in thing that really both chips do one thing though is that one once we start to get to this ending village section, there is this weird ghost-like artifact that appears on the i5, and it's just there present at pretty much every setting. I don't know how to get rid of it, but it is there. It's not distracting enough to say that it ruins the whole experience, but it's definitely there and it's definitely noticeable. Now, if we turn up the TDP to 20 watts on both systems, there is a improvement on both, but it's not really significant. And one thing that you'll see with the i5 is the fact that it's struggling to even produce a 20 watt average. The TDP was raised to 20 watts and in other games, it will reach that 20 watts consistently. But in this one, for some reason, it just really fluctuated all over the place. Not 100% sure what it was, but it was consistent enough in pretty much every run that I did of this game. And in other games, I can confirm 
confirmed that it was pretty much just a locked 20 watts. It would spike up when it was loading in new sections, but while things weren't actually being rendered on the screen, it really struggled to even reach the 18 watts. And I'm not 100% sure what could have been causing this because you can see that the CPU itself, it, the temperatures that it's reaching are not anywhere near their multi-throttle levels. And I do find that the i5 tends to fluctuate in power a lot more than the Ryzen 5 does, but this was one of those situations where it really almost never touched the full 20 watts. So it was just odd overall to see. But you can see that both of them are pretty much at the 1080p full resolutions, not going to be able to produce a playable experience at the 20 watt settings. Really, both of them are struggling here. The Ryzen 5 is giving us what looks like a 30 FPS average, but it's those 1% lows dipping down into the low 20s that really makes the experience rough overall. You will notice that with the i5, we did load in this section significantly quicker with the higher TDP setting, but it also introduced the same popping issue that is present in the Ryzen 5. So both of them seem to struggle in that regard. It doesn't really seem to be something that can fix normally. You could see that there is definitely some differences in the way that things are being rendered, even though the settings are identical and you can see the same ghosting issue that is present in the Ryzen 5, or rather the i5. I definitely don't know what that ghosting thing is, but it's definitely present all the time. But again, it's not anything where I would say it would ruin the experience of playing the game. I think the FPS that you're getting out of this in general is what's going to do that. Now you can see here where when we drop the target render resolution to 60%, the Ryzen 5 really notices an improvement to the point where we are now well within playable FPS range. And that is not something you can say about the i5. The i5 is still struggling to even get close to a 30 FPS average. Our 1% lows are at least this time around comfortably within the 20 FPS range. So there will be moments where that things will dip down. It's mostly when loading in new scenarios. You will, of course, notice that the i5 is still struggling to keep that consistent 20 watts, even going down into the 19s. It's mostly just sticking to 17 and 18. Again, mostly something that is relegated to this game and specific other ones. Again, the chip does tend to fluctuate a lot, at least for me and my system, but it's one of those things where this has been the most noticeable that it's like fluctuated all over the place. It's definitely going to be a much more playable experience on the i5 now than it was at the stock settings, but it's really just not going to be enjoyable overall. And the Ryzen 5 just continues to really flex all over the i5. And really part of the issue here is also the fact that the i5 is struggling to even keep that consistent 20 watts. And we can get more out of the Ryzen 5 now than this 20 watts limit that we have it at right now. This is just so that it's equal to the i5. You'll see here, by the way, that we are now actually able to load this scene consistently faster on the i5. So for sure, the extra TDP is helping out here significantly. But it's still overall just going to be a pretty tough sell to call the i5 a playable experience right now. And if we just raise the TDP of the Ryzen 5 by an extra 5 watts, we're going to be able to squeeze out a little bit more performance. And we're already tapped out on the i5. As you can see with the Ryzen 5 set to the 25 watts, it just performs very solidly. You're going to be able to get at least a 30 FPS average while playing the game. This is with the target render resolution of 60% just because that's realistically what I would set it to if I was trying to play the game. The level of performance that we're getting out of this is just well within a playable range, and that's just not something I can say for the i5. And it really seems like the i5 1135G7 was a stopgap solution where it feels like it's definitely a mixture of Intel pre Alder Lake, and it has some of the post Alder Lake features. It was definitely the fact that Intel was able to boost their GPU performance significantly before they could really get to their CPUs because this would have been a monster of a chip six years ago. At this point, the market has just moved on. The fact that you can get six powerful cores and 12 threads with a better GPU at essentially the same price point as the 1135G7 pretty much makes the 1135G7 irrelevant unless it's in one of those very, very price competitive categories. Like, I mean, this gateway system, the fact that you can buy it refurbished for $300 with 16 gigabytes of RAM half a terabyte of storage and the 1135g7 is kind of an insane deal because even the best deals that you can get on the ryzen 5 are going to be eight gigabytes of ram and they're going to be four to five hundred dollars so that means you're gonna have to spend more money to upgrade the ram just to actually be able to get decent levels of performance because as you've seen on this channel the difference between the 
8 gigabytes and the 16 gigabytes can be night and day where some games will not even run they will not even perform well enough to even call them playable you drop in the 16 gigabytes of ram suddenly they're absolutely amazing which means it's a necessary upgrade so now we're talking about the 1135g7 at 300 dollars versus a fully kitted out ryzen 5 at 500 dollars. that's pretty that's pretty substantial difference that's almost twice the price you know and i mean the numbers that you've seen here might be enough to convince you well i mean at least it'll be a noticeable difference on the ryzen 5 and i mean yeah but is that worth it? that really just depends on you but anyways i hope you found this comparison interesting and useful if you did be sure to subscribe and i will see you in the next one